If you missed the Turf Wars hosted by Rizzo and Jamesbot, it was an amazing 1v1 LAN that showcased some of the best 1v1 players in the game. This event was a North American tournament and the Grand Finals was AJ vs Lion Blaze. I won't spoil the result of the Grand Finals, but today I have a few 1s matches to review and two of them were against AJ, who was a top 2 NA 1s player at the time. I'm going to do my best to explain my actions and thoughts throughout the game and use an ink pen to illustrate my ideas. Let's get into the matches, I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, let's start with game 1 with Zanil here. Um, like I said, I'm not going to use the Epic Pen uh, tool unless I really need to to explain my thoughts. I'm probably just going to let this play through and talk about what I was doing. Right here, I'm trying to keep it close. I faked the slip reset and I uh, kind of went around uh, Zanil. Even though it wasn't a goal, I was just trying to make sure he didn't get a free clear. So sometimes, especially in ones, it's really important to make sure that you're not shooting directly on target. A lot of players are expecting that because obviously in a ones situation, the only thing you have to shoot at is the, is the, the goal. So it's important to know that that... That could be a mentality that players that are defending are going for. Is that immediate shot. And right here, I just went for the immediate challenge. It wasn't the cleanest, but he's sitting under the ball and waiting. I'm trying to play really fast here and stay close. It's decent 50-50 as well. Really good play for Zanil to steal that um, boost off of that. The thing about um, people have to realize, when you're hitting the ball, it's actually really, really important moment momentum-based. Like, he has 68 boost, pretty much the exact, exact same amount as me, because he has to use some of his boost to get around. So in the time it takes to uh, get around the uh, the ball here and go back, um, I'm hitting the ball to the corner. But in doing so, while I'm boosting through it, I actually slow my approach down. So instead of going as fast as I could to this boost, me hitting the ball is going to let him get past me. So I knew that was maybe the case, but I thought I had enough time since he flipped way past me. But it's important to think about that when you're going into these plays to, um, to think about how it's going to... Uh, affect your positioning because you can see now i'm zero boost he has full possession um i i i thought i had the chance of making the outplay he went for the bump here i almost got caught out but i think this is a goal right here yeah this is a goal so pretty good start to uh, the game here for me i hate this goal explosion I've, I've taken it off now finally thankfully but i really hated that i couldn't move after the goals um same thing with like the the what's the one with the missiles can't remember the name of it but I really hate that it just demos you and stuff. I just like to have like freedom after the goals. So right here, I could have went for that mid boost, but I knew once again he had more, more momentum off the uh, the kickoff. And most likely in this situation, I was gonna 50-50 it somewhere. Hitting this back was pretty smart. He's 50-50 again. He's turning pretty awkwardly. I assumed he was pretty low here. He still had a lot of, a lot of boost. Actually, he had 38. I didn't know that at the time, but I couldn't quite get this. I saw that he was going for the touch, so I just faked the jump, go for the boost, and now he should be pretty low. Yeah, he's zero, so just trying to force 50 50s, keep the ball close. This shot isn't that great, but once again, he has to make some sort of clear because he is low and the ball's going on target. The difference between this going on target and uh, and being over the bar is super, super huge in, in ones, especially. So that touch right here was just trying to get the ball, ball to loop in mid really quickly. He got, he got back on a defense pretty quickly there. So I unfortunately couldn't take a shot after my setup. But once again, just trying to start the starve. That was probably the first touch in this game that I would say I would not have liked to make. Because as you can see, right here, Zanil has 12. That touch right there now gives him possession. Because I can't fully um, challenge too well. So he gets the boost. And that whole thing was because of that one touch I made. Um, trying to keep the possession to the back corner. And now he has a, sort of a starve on me. I still have 30 boost. But it could have been a lot worse for me. Right here, I tried to just go for the immediate shot. He was getting the back corner boost. I had 12 boosts. At this point, I'm pretty fully committed after booming the ball off the sidewall. So, so far, it's a great start. I'm going to show how the rest of the game goes here. I think that it's been a couple weeks, actually, since they recorded these now. Because I did mention in the AJ uh, in the AJ ranked games that I was going to put out the ones analysis soon. Um, I think this starts going in his favor a little bit, if I remember correctly. Really good, really good small ball here. And I'm dead. So there's a good chance that he could score. I can't go for that back corner boost because he can shoot right away. I'm trying to close the gap. Good play so far. But he's got possession. We're pretty even on boost. He missed his flip reset. So I saw him bail. But not a great first touch. You see how much boost I wasted to get this touch? If I push this ball forward instead, um, the contact I want to hit, which I just need to switch my pen real quick. Um, I hit it here, which sends the ball like flying really high up. And it's not really going to give me that trajectory to go towards the net. Um, it's really important when you're looking at the ball um, to see the kind of like the 3D line through it. So if I hit it here, it's going to go through the ball that way and forward out this way. But it's all about this arc of the ball. 
Um, this is going to hit it really high up if you really want it to hit it high up. But if you want to go forward, you're going to want to aim for that like middle third, like right here. That'll have a nice pop towards his goal. Um, and obviously it was a little awkward because I was kind of, kind of turning in heavy into this. So for me to get um, a pop like this and then follow it, I have to make sure I drive into the half volley. Otherwise, I'm just going to waste the position. So I kind of wasted it. Um, sorry, whenever I click back in, it's going to do that do that little double fake there with the, the camera. But I wasted a lot of boost. So I instead wanted to come back to the ground. And what I tried to do there was sort of salvage the 50-50. Because as I'm dropping down here with 45, if I go under the ball and try to catch this, like if I go down here, I can tell that by the way he's boosting, he's going to reach this point before I can land under the ball and catch it. So what's going to happen if I go under the ball? Is he's gonna just immediately challenge me and it's gonna fly over my head behind me over the goal sorry that was a terrible arrow but um i kind of knew that was gonna happen because like from his perspective like see if i landed under here he's already ready there to just absolutely dunk me so what i'm trying to do is force the 50 50 to the corner but instead he just gets a really heavy dunk and he gets this first goal so it was a good idea by me but i think i just executed it pretty poorly with the way that i landed um what probably would have been better is to lead in behind the ball so that way it pinches off the both of us but either way right here i know that if i give him free possession i'm just gonna you know be be in the corner while he's got all of the play so instead what i do is i just keep challenging um but i obviously right there was a big overcommit as well i think yeah he scores that one um i like what i did here off of um this challenge using that boost pad to get that momentum with zero is really really important because now that zanil is getting the boost and turning inward because he thought he had possession for free i actually have him turned away and now i can get the back corner boost the biggest mistake here was flipping there. I don't think I needed to flip. I was kind of scared of his immediate shot, but I think I had time. And so that was a really good recovery by him. But I could have kept the pressure if I just stayed near the ball with 100 boost. Because I, I took the back corner. He rushed back. So he probably wasted it. Actually, I can probably just check because, you know, we're in replay analysis here. Yeah. So he used 33% of his boost just to get back to the play that I stole from him. So in doing that, he's already wasted a lot. And then he wasted a bunch of boost here. So what I could have done is just waited for him to boom it out. But now that he had a free ball, he used all of his boost to get that final play. So 2-3 now. I really, really kind of messed up those two aggressive touches or challenges. Um, I, the biggest thing in one is I, I just try to be really, really aggressive and, and pressure heavy. And that's a really good kickoff for him. So yeah, this is where I was saying it kind of goes back in his favor. It's been three minutes of the game so far, but pretty low scoring game on average for, for ones for sure. So big fake there. I got scared right here because I knew he could turn it in. So I had to turn away because of the way that I popped that ball. Um, if from his perspective, um, this pop, like he, if I popped this to the corner, he would have bailed to the left and got the mid boost. But because I gave him space, I actually faked that back corner. So that way he's stuck with zero boost. And then I'm trying to play for the boost as well. He's going to get that back corner. Try to go for the bump here. That's my only play because the ball's just rolling towards. It's a decent save. A little, a little close. I missed the boost here. So does he though. I'm gonna fake this. I take it to the back corner and I got some space. He's gonna get the mid boost and probably try to turn or something. So I was scared of that. So that's why I, why, that's why I went for the immediate flick. Cause sometimes people get a little bit aggressive. That touch is good to stall the time. Wasting a lot of boost to go across the field though. He's got a possession. Decent save. Letting him touch it to the corner. Trying to bump him a little bit so I can get boost. Also avoid the uh, the demos or any bumps and stuff. So just trying to keep the ball close here. A really good save from Zanil, but he's going to be pretty low here. He's at zero. So that's why I'm trying to make these like awkward touches to put him in a position where he's going to have to make awkward saves and be low boost. So like even though I shot this ball right here, I wasn't too worried because I knew he was very low. So he's falling off the wall. He ends up booming it backwards, but I have time to get this boost and just loop back. He tries to lead it to the boost, but of course, because I have 100, 100 boost, I can just go back and get it. I have space here. It was, I don't know what the replay is doing, but that was a wave dash. It just... <laughs> it just didn't even happen on the replay. It's so weird. I flick over his head, and I think I sneak it in. So, yeah. Those are really annoying in ones, by the way. Like, for someone to do these touches like this, and it looks like I'm going to get the boost... Actually, just flick it over his head and he's backwards. Those plays are really annoying. I get those like scored on me all the time. Um, they're they're quick little flicks. You kind of scoop it under your car. Now, 
I don't remember the score line. I didn't really check. I just opened up the file. I think that might have been the last goal. So as we're going here, I think my mentality was just to try and stay on this goal, the score line because it's been a pretty low scoring game. And when it's a low scoring ones game, oh no, I scored. A, oh, he forfeit. That's why. Well, my, my mentality going into ones when it's uh, a low scoring game is to play that safer play. But if it's like goal after goal, I kind of be a little, little more aggressive because um, I don't know. Like you're going to see in the next games with AJ. Uh, I believe one was a win, one was a loss. I don't remember which one was which. But we'll, we'll go through the order of the games I played them. It was a lot more aggressive, and I think a lot more goals were scored. So we'll go into the second game uh, and see how those games went. Uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Let me know if you guys want to see more of this. It's, it's sort of... Um, it's a bit difficult to um, discuss my thoughts after the fact. Because, you know, in hind hindsight is always 2020. All right. Game two. This is AJ now. We've got two games of AJ for the rest of the video. Um, I believe I played him right after Zanil. I can't quite remember. So right here, I know that AJ is pushing up. So once again, I talked about this at the beginning of the, the episode. Um, going off target is really, really important. He thinks I'm trying to set up a play towards the net. So he's he's challenging and being in the position of goal line. So instead, what I do is just flick it behind him. So once again, this is what I was talking about where I don't want to give a free play. So I have the option right here. I have two options, especially with 22 boost. Um, I've been trying to do this kickoff where I save about 12 to 20 boost off of the uh, the kickoff so then I have the option to either loop around this ball if he goes for this mid boost right away or go for the back corner and I know that he's gonna have this boost for sure um, before I do I'm gonna change the color actually of this thing so it's a little bit uh, easier to see um, but I know that there's two options I have when I see him lead towards this ball and waste his boost towards the ball I know that he's gonna get this boost anyway but because he has the ball not close enough he can't go around the ball here and catch it in time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead around behind here and just try to break up the play. I know I'm not going to get possession here because the ball's going to roll up here. and I'm just going to like pop it up somewhere. But in doing so, I at least give myself the space to, um, you know, not give him a free air drill out the wall. So I'm just popping it forward. I actually go for the uh, the immediate shot here. <laughs> so that so my whole plan, I think my touch was actually better than I expected. I know I just said I was going to go back for the back corner. But the fact that I popped it up so nicely, I was like, okay, I'll get this pad and then go for the shot. So it was a great placement. It was a really over commitment for me if I missed this because you can see um, I'm going to like basically fall. Um, I'll go into paint or into the pen again. I'm going to fall like this, like behind him. So if I don't get the shot and it bounced off the wall, it's going to spill out this way. And then AJ is going to go for it again. I actually think I like the yellow color better. Honestly, yeah, this is this is better. I think it's hard to see the pink. So, you know, we'll stick with the we'll stick with the yellow. I know it's the same color as like the boost and stuff, but it's pretty clean. Uh, we'll move on though. So, so far, so good. I have really good starts in these games, but um, I have a problem with, like I said, uh, sticking to my guns and then um, sort of getting score on in a way that I probably shouldn't if I'm, you know, more careful. So right here, I'm going to fake this. I didn't have the touch. And it's really, really awkward for AJ on the wall. And I actually end up scoring. But I, I would say that my first touch was not what I wanted. Like right here, I could have looped a little bit further behind and let the ball roll up the wall because I do have the space. But this, this is awkward here. I can't really air roll properly. But it, it was so awkward, in fact, that AJ was confused. So, fair enough. I just don't think that was my most optimal play. But Rocket League is also kind of weird where the most optimal play is not always the most optimal play. And I, I know that sounds silly. It was a good demo, though. So, AJ spawned on this side. So, I'm trying to stay close and be careful with how I'm going to approach this. Really good save, though. And right here, I'm trying to go for the bump while he's coming back. So, I get the demo. And I think I score again. So once again, like I said, really, really good starts to both of these games so far. But as you see, um, it kind of changes. And I want to basically when I'm doing this, I want to see what I'm doing that changes. And I know that like so far I've had some pretty good kickoff possession. So it's not like it's a huge deal. Um, that's a better touch. And see how where I contacted the ball and it went forward. The decent shot it goes under my head though. And I think this is where he scores his first goal. So... This is why I don't really like going for these because it's like super overcommitted. I could have caught the ball and went for like more of an air dribble. Um, but you can see where the sparks lay on this car. I'm just going to go back here um, and slow this down. So I hit it under the, the bottom of the third of the ball instead of right underneath. It also has to do with the momentum. There's a lot of um, momentum based stuff in Rocket League. Like the touch that you make. I would say that right there, not my best option to go for the shot because of the setup was so, so weak. I think I would have been better to just hold onto the ball. But yeah, my, my setup was a lot better than that one touch I made in the Zanil game where I kind of just boomed it into the ceiling. So like the smallest change of angle on the ball, um, 
the, the smallest ang angle of change is where you'll ha have a big difference. And it's like the butterfly effect almost. Uh, you know, one start starting position is going to be uh, so different and drastically change the outcome in Rocket League. So right here I have low boost. Let's go for the immediate boom because he slowed all of his momentum down. Also, that air dribble challenge that I made was was to try and watch out for the flip reset, but also keep in mind that he could uh, fake it. So I'm trying to like play in the middle of both of them. So right there, I'm just trying to play for the fake. Once again, I tried to play it away. That was a really good recovery from AJ that would steal that boost, but I'm trying not to play it onto the net. I'm trying to play it into uh, the corner. Really bad turn there. Might be a goal if he sets this up well. Yeah, good bump. Um, I would say my biggest... Uh, issue here is this turn deep i could have turned a little bit uh not as wide i did like a sort of 180 on the wall or like 360 almost and that was a good bump play from him so good aggression for me but just a bad turn i was hoping to try and get down to the floor in time to grab that ball when he popped it it's a good catch from aj he's gonna have the boost in the corner and a setup Looks like he might have a flip, which he does. Good 50-50. He's stuck in the net, so I know I have that that back corner boost for free. And here I'm just going to start an air dribble or something. I think I go for a flick or an air dribble. Yeah, I went for... A, I didn't have my flip. So I, I what I wanted to do there was actually flip into him. Um, because if you, if you look at his position while he's trying to save this, um, I could have flipped to the right here and went for the bump. But I didn't, I didn't actually flip at the last second. Um, and I ended up running out of my flip. So... It was a good setup, but I, once again, pretty over, pretty overcommitted. And you might score here for the bump. Yep. A double bump play in a row. <laughs> this is Rocket League. That was weird. I don't know what that like lightning bolt leave thing was, but it wasn't what happened in the game. So he's got possession again. Did the name just update? Was he always optic AJ in here? I don't think he was optic at the time when I played this. So it's kind of interesting. I know he's not going to challenge this. It's too close to the wall. A lot of the times when there's a there's a ball close to the wall like this, um, he's gonna if he challenges, he's gonna bounce off the back wall. That was a really nice flick though. Like from his perspective, there's not really a lot of options that he could do or it could have here to challenge. And I just placed it perfectly top left. I mean, there's not really any saving that. It's pretty, you know, tried and true. It's a really good placement. You can't cover everything, especially in ones. I think I score again here. Yeah, I mean it wasn't the strongest of shots. But I just got to secure it, especially with, like, low boost. There's something really weird about ones and low boost on kickoff. There's a lot of opportunities that never show up in any other game mode. Um, maybe twos sometimes on kickoffs, but I would say most of the time, like, ones is a very unique situation where kickoffs are just so weird for a while. Like, you have to play this awkward, like, oh, I'm low, he's low, because we just both went for kickoff. Um, I think I doinked this. Yeah, nice. So, good start. Kind of falter a little bit, and then I brought it back. Um, but I think this game, once again, does the same thing. Uh, like a pattern of going up and down in goals. I really want to make sure I touch that because if I don't... That one, he's kind of scaring me there and I, I definitely threw it away. But I really get 50-50. Um, if I leave that ball to bounce off that corner, it's going to be really bad for me. So right here, I'm trying to play a really slow, slow ball and keep it close. And pressure. I don't want to leave the ball right now because if I do, I'm basically just going to for free. That touch was horrible though. I need to get a free goal again. So I overcommitted a lot. And I, you can see I'm a little upset with myself. Um, I like to play high pressure, like I said, in ones. I think it's uh, definitely better than being like super defensive. Active defense is always important. And you can see that from the score line, I have way more shots than him. I know it's being weird with the, the effect thing on the side there. But um, I always like to try and play um, active defense, active offense. Because... You know, a lot of the times in ones, if you don't go for the ball, you're just going to get scored on anyway. So you might as well just get scored on while you're trying <laughs> rather than just let it let it happen. So he he, he uh, called my bluff on that fake uh, flick early. I probably could have flicked that early, though, and scored on him. I'll go back here. Yeah, he was super overcommitted. Like if I flicked immediately, he would have uh, he would have been out of position. So it's just a matter of like not seeing him behind the ball. And that's an, that's the another annoying, annoying thing about ones is that you're just all trying to just have a best guess it's never like like we can we can say that we're um you know we we, we predicted that and stuff but we're just we're just guessing and I, I don't like when people say it like oh i i i you know i i know what he's gonna do here a lot of the times you don't 
I'm, I'm gonna say that you be honest honestly you don't know what they're gonna do especially at the highest level like right here he's gonna have a nice flick I know he's gonna have the opportunity to flick it I can't challenge him but like I said if I just challenged him at least I'm doing something rather than just sitting here and not being able to get get to the ball so um active defense always more important but I don't want to just dive in I know a lot of players do that now lately it's actually pretty successful most of the time but people are getting used to it and once you um have a pattern of doing it in a game players will um will sort of uh you know adapt to that play style of being really really aggressive yeah i got too close to him there i think this might be where the, the game ties up oh no i spawned perfectly <laughs> um but he definitely should have had a goal there if i spawn on the other side i think it's a goal a lot of low boost gang here a uh, game not gang i don't want to say low boost gang so trying to leave the ball close to myself take it to the side keep pressure replays are really weird with the ball like that is that a good setup here and I score the eight to six and it was zero sec. Was that zero seconds? It was zero seconds. Yeah. So I'm just trying to keep it close. I don't want to let that ball fall, but I do score at the last second. So the first game here was a win. I, I think the next game is like a lot is a loss. Like I said, so let's go into the game, see what I did differently and see what went wrong. All right. Game number three of the video, but game number two against AJ. I think I only played two against him. Um, his name's AJ again. Yeah. So I don't think he was optic AJ at the time. I'm not sure why I updated like that. It was kind of weird. Get 50 50. Honestly, not the greatest touch because I give him free ball for a uh, free ball for free. Nice. So you can see how my early aggressions has made him kind of scared to um, go for that. Like he's trying to flick immediately or like fake it at least from his, from his perspective. He sees me turn. So that scared him to jump. I didn't, I was never going to commit on that, but I'm just trying to lead him in in closer. That boost is there, but it's the replay is kind of bugged. But if I turn immediately into the boost, he's going to double me. So I drive forward a little more than I need to and then get the boost at the last second. The radius of the the big boosts are pretty big. Bigger than you, you'd expect. Um, in doing map making and stuff, I have some like insider knowledge on some things. Like, you know, the way the balls bounce, uh, the physical materials of the actual surfaces and how the, uh, the, the friction works and stuff. And the biggest thing is seeing like the triggers for the, for the, uh, for the boost. There's actually a plugin too that can show you the boost. Uh, I do want to go back on this and see what I did wrong. Um, oh yeah, I didn't flip there. I had to, so in hindsight, he popped the ball too fast to go for the ball, to go for the shot, but it, it looked like he was going to make a softer touch because he slowed his approach down, but then he boosted at the last second. So he pops the ball too high. So there's no way he could say he could score. Um, if it went, went, went across like that, but I had to, I had to respect it. That's the thing about ones is you have to respect a lot of stuff that might go wrong anyway. So I went for it. Didn't quite work out. That was interesting. I think he got a flip reset off the, uh, <laughs> he like popped up with the ball. All right. So good start for him so far. Not a great touch again. I think he, no, he can't score. He hit it too hard. I got 45 trying to stay close right here. I'm trying to conserve boost. So I'm just staying with 31. I'm waiting until he bails and then I can use my boost on the on the approach. So it's okay if he gets a challenge there because I actually like win in that situation. Um, I didn't want to demo him there either. I was trying to like like get around him. That's a really good flick too. So early aggression once again. He's getting used to the fact that I'm sitting close. So I'm hoping that I, at some point I try to adapt to that. But we'll see. I might not. Nice, right, so a good kickoff win. I did get bumped. I still get the boost though. It's a decent 50 50. I end up trying to like loop out here, but yeah, he's going to score again. So I think the delayed flick here was too easy to read. Yeah, I hit it too far. You can see how much space there was between me and the, and the ball. Um, at that point, I shouldn't know that. Yeah, the way that it popped off my car. So what I need to do is hit that a little softer on the first touch, but. Yes, yeah, just not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to recover to that. It just bounced off that corner so nicely for him. So this is why the game didn't go so well. I think I had a really rough start. The other two games I had a good start. I'm, I'm, I think I'm more comfortable keeping a lead than I am getting it. Uh, I think that's probably the case for a lot of people, um, because it, you, you're more telegraphed as a player trying to get goals. Um, that's always an important thing too, mentality-wise, knowing that like, there's more of an urgency for a player to get to, to get goals. Uh, as the player um, who's down than it is for the player who's uh, up in the in the game. They have they, they have the freedom to just do whatever they want. 
Right here, I'm just trying to play low 50s. I can't score that, so I'm just going to go for the back corner. It's a good touch from AJ to keep it close. I think that was his first big overcommit, and I score here. Yeah, so he probably didn't want to make that touch. Um, let's see what he did here. It's 25. Yeah, he had zero, so... I think he just thought he had a skim, but even so, it was like it's really dangerous for him. I don't think it was going to be a good opportunity for him regardless, even if he touched that ball and skimmed it, because I was still going to get the back middle, and then or the left, the right middle, and then, you know, collect the ball at 100 boost. All right, so a, bit, a couple of wave dashes on the wall, or um, whatever it's called, uh, chain dashes. Now, I will say, AJ is one of the best in ones at avoiding this. He, he somehow finds a way to get under the ball and under the player and then still get a touch, um, even though I was right there. So I'm being really aggressive. I have zero boost. But in doing so, I do get a shot and the boost steal. So I, I was rewarded for doing that. And see, he's really terrified of me doing the uh, early turns and early challenges. So right here, I know that if I go for the mid boost, he's going to chip this in. So I'm going for the side flip already. On that challenge sorry i know my brain's really scattered i'm going through so many thoughts but like ones there's so much going on right here that first touch was just to set it up for me to go for an early shot so we do bring it back from three zero to three two for aj here but i don't think it goes super super well i might have tied it up i can't quite remember it was super long ago but he he sent he uh ends up getting away with it i think or getting it running away with the game is what i mean to say really good defense once again i don't want to i don't want to use all my boost because i have 40 only that touch ruined the bounce it's a good flick dumb touch so what's here what, what's the what's wrong here is it's, it's he's thinking i might have a chance to score he's not even looking at the play yet so the ball's bouncing in the mid i could have stayed with it um if i go into my pen here um i'll go back a little bit before i do that oh i gotta click into the <laughs> okay Go back one more. So what would have been better, um, instead of doing this front flick, what I should have done is a back flick flick or back flip flick, um, because what's going to happen is my car is actually going to fall this way and land about here. Um, meanwhile, a back flip would have kept my ball here, while the ball probably would have done the same trajectory off the backboard. And while he's going into the net like this and spinning around, I am in a position where when the ball bounces off the wall, which it's going to look like this back out this way i have a chance then to lead lead this ball in front and go for a shot and it's a lot safer of a play especially with the 21 boost i have in the corner here i think i could have played this a lot better and kept possession instead of doing that weird dumb double touch thing that i tried to do right here where i just tried to pop it towards goal but i think he was pretty low too so actually no he had boost we, we saw that before and another bump play you gotta love it rocket league 1v1 is just fantastic it's becoming more and more common that these plays are are the way you need to go because you know everyone's doing really really well well in defense and everyone's playing really really aggressive um to the point where everyone's going to be near the ball uh and and basically have a good option of where the ball's going to go on net every time so if you get rid of the player then they can't save it i mean only it's flawless logic really so that, i mean it makes sense why it's becoming more common now, that was a good fake by aj but i'm still gonna stay with this to make sure i don't uh lose possession and he actually used like a lot of boost here to get back so i knew he's gonna have to go for the back corner so i get mid for free i get awkward for him he knows i'm i'm sitting really close to the ball so he's trying to play these these extra touches Good 50 50. My only goal here is to get mid boost. He's probably going to take it to the left though. So he's chipping it towards net. I probably could have went for that a lot earlier. It's a decent 50 50, but I think, I think this whole thing, like I got lucky. I don't think that was really a good play. Oh yeah. Look, he didn't go up for it again. He just waited like super, super patiently. I think I could have played a little better, but like I didn't even, I kind of skimmed him. It's still not great because I don't, I don't, you know, I can't, he doesn't really have a good scoring opportunity. He does now because I backed off. I really shouldn't have backed off, but a good defensive challenge for me. He might just shoot this. Yeah, I save it though. 
Gotta avoid the bumps. I tried to. I thought he was gonna leave the second I went up the wall right here. Cause like, right there, I thought he would just go around. Cause he's zero boost, but he, he's still, f I, I, what is that? <laughs> Uh-huh. So, if you don't know about... De oh, my God, my voice. If you don't know about demos and how they work, I feel like that's beyond the midpoint of my car. I don't think you're supposed to demo if you're in the front of the car like that. Unless I changed it. I have no idea. But that doesn't seem right at all. Like, what? <laughs> how am I dead there? Okay. Fair enough. Let's go back to 100%. Huh? There we go. Oh, look, another air dribble bump. <laughs> oh, man. So now I see why I, why I lost Copium. Now, I could have played that better. I definitely could have avoided it. Oh, and then I think he just scores here. Yeah, so I tried to go for a fake play there. My only opportunity with, like, 13 seconds left was to go for some sort of fake play. So I tried to pop it up, but it ended up just, ended up just booming into the ceiling. So it was a good effort to try and make something happen, but I think it just... The game just kind of fizzles out at that point. I mean, it's uh, nine seconds left. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Definitely an interesting one. I think that there was a lot to learn there for me, even. And uh, hopefully, you learned something about ones and your game, your own gameplay. Um, but it was a lot of fun to uh, to analyze these. I kind of procrastinated with this for quite a while, but it finally, you know, came to life. I think that I did a pretty decent job of explaining my thoughts. It's always hard in hindsight, like I said, to to say it what I was thinking in the moment. So. I have some good, you know, even when watching this, I have some good ideas of what AJ is intending to do. So when you're when you're trying to read an opponent, try to predict what they're doing, but also, you know, read the play that as it's happening. So until next time, have a great day, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It was a lot of fun.